This colorful little Pisces may remind you of an exotic fish from the crystal waters of the Caribbean, but its wild habitat is limited to the Tennessee River, although you can also find them in the Tennessee Aquarium. So the tangerine darter is just an awesome fish. Its name is because of the bright tangerine belly it's got. It's got this nice undulating black stripe along the side, and unlike most darters, it has a little bit of a swim bladder, so it can get up off the bottom of the river and swim around, and they're really personable. Even when you're snorkeling, they sort of come up to your mask and say, hey, what's happening? I'm pretty, look at me. They're really cute. Not only are they on display for the public, but tangerine darters are also being propagated, another word for breeding, at the Tennessee Aquarium Conservation Institute. Here we have Teresa who does all the work down here with Sarah Kate and Kaylee and Seth. And Teresa right now is feeding the tangerine darters blackworms. They are the same type of food that tangerine darters will find and feed on out in the rivers and streams. So we wanna keep them having a natural diet. And they'll need their strength for the muscle mission ahead. Even though they're only in the upper Tennessee River, they're pretty common where they're found. We're propagating them at the Conservation Institute not to stock them back in the river like we do most of our fishes, but we are helping an endangered mussel by growing up little tangerine darters. This is the Kraken prairie mussel, critical endangered species. Nearly 150 miles west of the aquarium, the Cumberland River Aquatic Center and its tanks of freshwater mussels are not easy to find. They are hidden away behind locked gates at the TVA's Gallatin Fossil Plant. This is where Dan Hua and her TWRA team are working relentlessly to rescue a long list of endangered mussels, the creatures we count on to filter and clean our waterways. All the species we work with here, majority of them are critical endangered species. That's why they need the help more than the other common species. Our North American freshwater mussels are the most endangered group of freshwater animals we have throughout North America. About 70% of them are imperiled. We have over 140 species of freshwater mussels and I think it's the uh, second abundant species in the country. And uh, but we have over 40 species are listed and endangered. So that's a big number of the endangered species of freshwater mussels. And this is where the tangerine darters bred at the aquarium are needed. The fish host used for this mussel is a uh, quick for the Quake and Prairie Mussel is tangerine daughter and log perch. That's their host. The mussel need to use fish as a host. If they cannot meet the host, they cannot reproduce. It's an extraordinary design in nature, requiring mussels to physically interact with certain species of fish. When the mother clam releases the babies, they're little larval critters called glochidia, and they have to attach to a fish to transform into a juvenile mussel. The movement by a mussel you see here is intended as a lure. It's a natural instinct even though there are no fish in this tank. A fish mistakes the movement for food, takes a bite, and thousands of the tiny mussel babies spring their trap. These little mussels have to clamp on a fish, their gills mostly, sometimes their fins, and they sit there for two or three weeks using some of the food off the fish and they completely transform from something that looks like a staple remover into a little juvenile muscle the size of a pinhead. Then they fall off in the bottom and start growing up like a regular muscle. That's the natural way of the wild. But much of the wild has been tamed by progress. The biggest issues are us stopping the flow of water with dams and flooding out their natural habitat because a lot of these mussels are large river mussels. But we have mill dams throughout all of our smaller streams too. When you add in chemical spills, pesticides, poor agricultural practices, siltation caused by construction, the mussels are no match. And scientific solutions are not all that simple. 
we collect the blue stuff and then we keep in our facility for the time we need and then we manually get the locality out and put them on the right host fish. Then we'll be able to propagate the juvenile mussels out, increase the production of the juvenile mussels. And now biologists have added in vitro technology to their toolbox, growing the mussels in a petri dish. From a small petri dish, 60 millimeters in diameter can produce over 2,000 juvenile mussels. In vitro holds promise, but it's still very new. Even using a host fish isn't always successful. I'm looking forward for the propagate tangerine dollar this year, see if they would work out. The common names for some of the endangered mussels reflect out of water comparisons, like sheep nose and pig toe. Do you think that looks like a pig toe? I think maybe. Amusing references, but they can also be compared to a canary in the coal mine. The mussels not like other aquatic animals. They don't move that much. If uh, you see the mussels die, and you got to know that something happened here, the ecosystem is not right. The message we should learn from the mussels is unmistakable. Protect our water, protect our river. You save the animal and you save the environment, we save ourselves. So it all comes back to our great biodiversity, our underwater rainforest right in our backyard here in the southeast. The healthier we keep it, the more species we have around, the better it works for the critters in the river and for humans.